Funding for Building New York is provided by First American Title Insurance Company of New York. Welcome to Building New York. My name is Michael Stoller. In 1902, Joseph Durst comes over from Poland. 1905, he decides to go into the apparel business. Today, the Durst organization owns over 8, billion, 8 million square feet of office space. They own residential space. They are one of the largest family-owned businesses in the real estate business in New York. I'm very fortunate to have Douglas Durst today as my guest. Thank you, Michael. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Douglas. Douglas, your, your great-grandfather, Joseph, came over in steerage, and he had, a, I think the story is that he came over with $3 in his lapel, and that was his protection. And then three years later, in 1905, he goes into business with this man, Mr. Rubin, and they go into the apparel business. How, how did your grandfather go in 1915 and decide to buy a building on 34th Street? Well, from what I understand, uh, he was a incredibly intelligent and shrewd. Well, I know he was a very intelligent and shrewd person, but uh, we came over here with $3 in his pocket, as you said, and uh, I'm told that shortly thereafter he got a job and sent the $3 back home because they needed it more than he did. He was able to save $300 over the next couple of years, and he and Mr. Rubin invested it in, in the clothing business, and they were extremely successful. While he was in the clothing business, people would ask his advice about different things, especially real estate, and he had a great aptitude for it. So he saw all these people uh, making profits off his, his advice, and in 1915, he went off and for, started the what is now the Durst organization. Now, did he um, buy a office building or did he buy a, uh, an apartment house at that time? At, I believe at that time it was a office building. He bought loft buildings, he bought apartment buildings, bought buildings uh, throughout the city. We're now concentrated uh, mainly in midtown Manhattan. And then your, your father joined him in like 1942. Yes, that's correct. And at that time, um, Basically, the Durst organization owned mostly residential. Quite a bit of residential. And then 1948 comes around, and what happens? 1948, the uh, uh, rent control was made a permanent emergency, and my family uh, decided that they didn't want to, that this was not an asset that they wanted to own, and they sold all their residential and invested in uh, mainly in commercial. We had prior to that bought a building at 205 East 42nd Street, which uh, rented up very well, and that was the beginning of our real commercial uh, enterprise. Right. 205, your major tenant today, I believe, is Pfizer? That's correct. They operate about 70 percent of the building. And ba basically, a lot of people at that time really didn't want to go to Third Avenue. It was a Grand Central neighborhood, and um, there was the L. And your family in 1944 or something bought 205. And then your father and your grandfather uh, got involved and started really acquiring Third Avenue. You were the, the major player on Third Avenue. My father assembled almost the, the land under almost all the office buildings that were built on Third Avenue in the 40s. And we built uh, five buildings on Third Avenue. Then in the uh, 60s, my father saw that, that the area was getting filled up. He realized that there'd have to be an expansion and that it would occur to the west. He began investing in property on, in 6th Avenue to 7th Avenue from 42nd Street to 47th Street. Now, you told me that your, your, your father really wanted to create the next Rockefeller Center. Is that correct? He wanted to create what, what he 
considered to be Rockefeller, Rockefeller Center South. Rockefeller Center had expanded to the west by that point, and uh, he saw the natural extension would be to the south from 47th to 42nd Street. And at one point, uh, my father had contracts on almost all the land between in those blocks. Then it's 1973. What happens then? 1973, as uh, many people in the real estate business know, there was a tremendous real estate recession. People were giving uh, buildings back to the, uh, to the city, to the banks, to whomever they could find to take them off their hands. And uh, we, were, we had a, a, an exchange in place to sell a, a site on 3rd Avenue and acquire about uh, 20 properties on the west side. That exchange collapsed, and we had to undo our purchases. And we had to, because of the recession, we had to give up a uh, number of the properties that we had acquired in the area. And your first building on 6th Avenue, or the Avenue of the Americas, was built <laughs> Excuse when? Excuse me. The first building, uh, 1133 6th Avenue, was completed in 1968. And at that time, where was Douglas Thurst? At that time, I had just moved back here from uh, California. I graduated from Berkeley in 1966, and uh, I moved back here in 67, excuse me, and I was attending NYU School of Public Administration in now, urban now, studies. Now, your, now your major when you went to uh, Berkeley was what? I majored in economics, and my interest at that point was in the developing countries and the economics of developing countries, and I had thought of a career in uh, public service uh, in, in uh, those fields, and that's what I was studying at NYU. So it's it's the it's the seventies. We're in a recession, um, and f from what I remember reading and talking to you, your father <coughs> really never liked to to own a building or develop property that he couldn't walk to. That was one of uh, his sayings that we shouldn't buy anything that uh, he couldn't walk to. And lucky for us, at that point, he lived in uh, on the east side of Manhattan, so he could walk to any place in Midtown Manhattan. And would you say, you, you know, your father uh, and the family really were the uh, were involved with 42nd Street? Your first involvement with 42nd Street was when, 1963? Well, uh, no, actually in the uh, 50s, my father assembled the land uh, on 42nd Street to 43rd Street from 9th to 10th, where Manhattan Plaza is. He acquired the entire block uh, with about 80 properties which uh, was, say, an accomplishment. And then he sold it? He to sold it to HRH, who built Manhattan Plaza. But that wasn't really Times Square. I no, mean, when did, when did you guys go on to 6th Avenue and what you've done so much, which we'll talk about in a little on while? On 42nd Street, uh, between 6th and 7th, we were acquiring properties uh, in the mid uh, to late 60s. And giving some of them up in the early 70s, unfortunately. It's 1973. You give up some property. You own one property. And for a period of 22 years, from 1973 to 1995, you really only uh, built two other buildings? From uh, 73, yes. We built uh, uh, 1155, which was finished in 1984. And we built 114 West 40, 47th Street, which was finished in uh, 1989 for U.S. Trust. And one thing that your father did was your father would never take risk, is what I heard. Uh, he would not rent. When he rented to U.S. Trust, he knew that they were on a lease. That's, well, yes. As opposed to 1995, when Douglas Durst decides to do some changes over, over there. But let, let's get back a couple of years prior. It's Times Square. It's in the 80s. Prudential Insurance Company and George Klein are planning to build these towers, which subsequently were built later on, you being the first builder of a tower. And the Durst family sues? Uh, in 1984, the... Uh, Times Square redevelopment plan was was passed by the city council from 1984 until uh, 
December 1987, nothing, nothing happened. In December of 87, the city uh, enacted, the, or city and state enacted legislation that changed the type of plan and allowed the, the project to go ahead with just building subsidized office buildings and uh, divorcing the buildings from the rest of the plan. And at that point, uh, we sued to say that the plan, that it had to be one plan, that they had to do everything. They couldn't just do the office buildings. What, what was the other part of the plan for my audience? The other part of the plan was to redevelop the theaters on 42nd Street and uh, to build a merchandise mart on 8th Avenue. Now, the, the theaters got redeveloped. The merchandise mart never well, did. Well, uh, the, the only theater that really got redeveloped, well, there are two theaters, I shouldn't say that. The, uh, the uh, New Victory and the New Selwyn, York. which became uh, the American Airlines Theater. But the other theaters uh, are now Madame Tussauds. And the original plan was that all eight historic theaters would be maintained. Uh, but, I mean, that's past history, so it's not, not germane. Now, it's 1995. Uh, your father, Seymour, had passed on? Yes, in May of 1995. And that's prior to you um, cre thinking about building uh, Four Times Square? No, we, we were discussing that, and we had uh, initiated meetings just about that time. Uh, in early 1995, we be began discussions with uh, George Klein and Prudential about acquiring the site where Four Times Square is. Now, your father would never build on spec. His son, the University of Berkeley, California Berkeley, said, I'm going to build this on spec. Now, this was a, a major undertaking. How do you decide to, to build a building on spec in Times Square when the neighborhood, as you and I discussed before, was something that you never really expected it to be what, <coughs> what it is today. We had just completed uh, the renovation of and rented the, the, our building at 1133 Avenue of the Americas. That building, as I said, was completed in 1968, and my father uh, and his brothers had leased up the entire building um, uh, before it was built. So that all the leases expired in 25 years, which made them uh, expire in 1993, actually beginning of 94. And the building was built with asbestos, so all the tenants had to get out. And at that point, the market was pretty bad, but we were able to rent all 900,000 feet fairly quickly. We saw, we were talking to all sorts of tenants we knew what the demand was. So while uh, we did not have any signed leases, I was very confident that the market was turning around and the demand would be there. Actually, our, we had thought that being in Times Square, we would be able to rent the retail, and that would give us a base to support the building while we found office tenants. But uh, it, it happened the other way around, and we rented the office space rather quickly in the retail took a little longer. Now, when, when you, when you uh, built the building, you built it because, as you said to me, if they were going to give subsidies, I was going to take the opportunity. We, we were very much against the subsidies. We fought them being put in place. Once they were put in place, we thought that if somebody was going to use them, it should be us. So let's talk about Four Times Square. It's the first building over there. Uh, what, what, how do, you, how do you design this green building, this, this unique building? That was a there? tremendous effort. It was something that nobody had done before. But uh, at that point, we weren't sure how many more office buildings we were going to be building. And we wanted to build something that would not only endure, but would make a statement about uh, who we were and what type of buildings we wanted to build. So uh, luckily, we were working with Dan Tishman who had a strong interest in the environment. And uh, at that point, it was uh, Fox and Fowl, both Bruce and Bob, were very uh, were and are very interested in environmental buildings. So together, the three of us were able to work together to build, along with many consultants, to build 
the, the first green skyscraper in Manhattan. And, and now you opened the building when? The building opened uh, in 1999. For and you Nast. had, you were 100% leased on the commercial? Yes. With Condé Nast and uh, Skadden Arms as your tenants? Skadden Arms was, was uh, we actually, uh, they were actually looking at uh, trying to stay where they are at 919, and we had what we called a mutual stalking horse agreement so that we each could say we were having discussions uh, on, on the space to uh, help us make other deals. But in their discussions with us, Skadden realized that uh, this was an opportunity and that we were a landlord they could work with. So they uh, decided, we're very happy that they decided to move to Four Times Square. And then you had NASDAQ open a year later. That's correct. And ESPN Zone, and yes. so that, that's doing great. Let's talk about the other site, which today you are building probably the finest office building in Midtown. You're building, you know, one Bryant Park or the Bank, uh, of, Bank America. of America. The Bank of America Tower at one Bryant Park. How many years did it take you to acquire that land? We, uh, the first piece we acquired was uh, 1967. It was a restaurant called White's Fish House. It's a very famous uh, New York City restaurant. Uh, and um, it probably had not been renovated uh, for about 50 years. Uh, but uh, we then acquired most of the rest of the block, but had to give up parts of it uh, in the 70s. In the 70s. We owned, uh, we kept about 50,000 feet um, out of the 83,000 feet that uh, one Bryant Park sits on. And over the years, uh, we began reacquiring the, the pieces we didn't own. <coughs> Actually, uh, one building we sold to the ACLU. We sold it to them for uh, $600,000 and had to buy it back from them for six million dollars. But uh, that's, that's the, the real cost, That's the cost of development. Yes, that's the real estate business. So when did you acquire the final piece to make one Bryan Park? We acquired that uh, in the fall of uh, 2002. Yes, 2002. But prior to that, you were also doing some other developments. You, you had uh, built an apartment house on the, on the Third Avenue side, right at 245? On, uh, two, uh, in 1986, we finished, which was our first residential building in uh, 40 years, uh, we built a new residential building at 234 East 46th Street. And at the same time, we, we renovated, did a condominium development uh, at West 74th Street and Broadway. And now the Helena. Let's talk about that on uh, 57th Street and 11th Avenue. When did you uh, start building that? We started that uh, in, uh, must have been the summer of 2002. And uh, that is a, that occupies presently like a quarter of the block between 11th and 12th? That's correct. It's uh, about uh, 500,000 feet and it's uh, approximately 600. Uh, apartments. And that's an 80-20? That's 80-20, yes. So 20% is reserved for affordable housing. That's right. Uh, and before we get back to Bryan Park, because I, you, you have a very interesting project that you're doing on 31st Street with uh, Hal Fetner. Let me just mention at the Helena, because we're not residential developers, uh, we worked with Rose Associates, Adam Rose, and uh, they they really did a terrific job in, in building that building. And at 31st Street, we're working with Hal Fetner, who uh, brought us into this, uh, this deal, where we're partners with uh, Hal and the Franciscan brothers who own the land. Uh, we will be building them a new friary. Uh, and on top of that will be um, the 80-20 residential development and we've sold a condominium interest to <clears throat> the American Cancer Society where they'll have their Project Hope.
which is uh, unique. So it's going to so right in the middle of uh, near Madison Square Garden, in the heart of Midtown, you're going to have a 60-story building with an 11-story uh, project, uh, Hope Lodge, and everything else. So let's get back to to, to to Bryant Park. It's 2002. You acquire the balance of the property. Douglas Durst is a risk taker as opposed to Seymour Durst. Were you going to build that building without a tenant? Uh, no, we were not going to be able to to build that. It's a uh, a billion dollar project, and uh, then and probably now, or I s certainly now, s building a project like that without a tenant is impossible. So how large is that? I mean, you're on the corner of Avenue of the Americas in Durst Country, as one would say. Durstville. We call Durstville, uh, across from the park, across the street from the Verizon building. And um, what is it, 2.1 2. 2. million square feet. And your partner is Bank of America? Bank of America is a 50% owner of the building. And they recently uh, leased some more space, so they have what, about how many? They started, the original lease was for 1.1 million, and they've taken another 500,000 feet, so they now, now have 1.6 million square feet. So, so you're like 75% leased up already? A, Almost 80%. Yes. You're 80% leased up to, to your partner over there. And you have 30% that you're going to be leasing. But the interesting qu point is that you were able to get Liberty Bonds on this deal. Out of the, out of the zone. No, no. The, uh, there was always an allocation for projects outside of downtown. Uh, $2 billion was allocated mm -hmm. for projects which were not in the downtown zone, which were to help uh, in the uh, economic development of the city. And when we started this project in uh, 2002, there was uh, no thought of construction. And um, uh, I think that uh, there could be no better use of Liberty Bonds than to build this project, which is, at the end of the day, going to probably pay somewhere around $40, $40 million to the city in real estate taxes. and. So I, I think those people who argue that that uh, it shouldn't be used, I think they they should then take the forty million dollars and they can use it where they want. No. So so right now the building is expected to open when two oh seven. When we began, we met with uh, Bank of America in uh, first time we met was in December of two thousand two. We laid out a schedule for them, which had them moving in in January of two thousand eight. Uh, we've lost a month. They're now scheduled to move in in February of 2008. Not, not too bad. In the, in We're the pretty pretty proud of that. Yes. Yes. And, and you know the interesting item is that Cushman and C. B. Richard Ellis recently released information saying that the office market is doing very well in in Midtown Manhattan. Um, and rents you're projecting on the balance of the 300,000 square feet. What type of rent? We're, we're, uh, our rents are going to start over $100 a foot, but uh, I would point out that, that this is a premium building. It's, uh, uh, it's not typical, a typical office building, and uh, the rents that we're seeing on, on 6th Avenue, while they have been increasing, they're probably now just about the level they were in 2000 uh, before the uh, r real estate values came down. And how do you get into the ferry business? <coughs> You're the chairman of uh, chairman of New York Water Taxi. Uh, I've always been interested in alternative means of transportation, and I think the greatest enemy of a livable city is the automobile. And uh, when we acquired the land at 57th between 11th and 12th. We began looking at ways of getting there, and the water is one of the obvious ways. And so I had had been, and that was in uh, 2000. And so I had been having discussions with Tom Fox about uh, the New York water taxi, which is something he had started in the late 90s. And after 2000, after 9/11, when we saw how dependent the city was on waterborne transportation, in the immediate days following, it was the only way to get around the city. 
uh, we decided to go that we would not wait as we had planned, but to go forward immediately and order boats uh, because it was something the city needed. We started uh, the first year, I think we carried uh, something like 50,000 people. In uh, 2005, we carried over a million people. So from 50,000 people to over a million people. And how many routes do you have now? Uh, I believe we, we have uh, five routes, plus we do uh, tours, which are extremely successful from South Street Seaport. And, and speaking of the seaport, last year you developed residential. You joint venture to residential? We have, we have a joint venture pro project at uh, Front Street, uh, just, uh, just east of the seaport. Our partners are uh, Zooberry, which is Tony Zanino and Dick Berry, and uh, Frank Siami. And we've won three awards for this renovation. It's a, Extremely successful project. It's uh, almost completely rented. It's 110, I believe it's 110 units, of which uh, 5% are um, affordable. Affordable housing. And, and on 11th Avenue, you have additional space next to Helena. What are you planning to do over there? We've been having discussions with uh, the automobile showrooms, which uh, the area is known for, and uh, hopefully we'll. Those will lead to something fairly soon. Douglas, one quick question before we have to go to end the program. You've never really, with the exception of the residential in Lower Manhattan, you've never really gone down to Lower Manhattan. Why not? It costs the same to, to build a building in Midtown as it does downtown, but the rents are considerably lower downtown. So, uh, And it's a little far for us to walk to. It's too far. Uh, Seymour, let him rest in peace. It would have been too far. Douglas, I think you, uh, your cousin Jody, who's a co-president with you, and the entire Durst organization have truly been builders of New York. Uh, with a ferry, with everything, um, uh, you epitomize what uh, a family and the involvement of the real estate community, and I'm really happy that you've been able to join me today well, thank in building you. New York. Thank you. Funding for Building New York was provided by First American Title Insurance Company of New York.